Well, hello again. This is Koji from South Theorhythms. And we are in this intense stretch between two eclipses, the lunar eclipse of November the 30th and upcoming in a week, pretty much, the solar eclipse on December the 14th, which will be visible from South America only. So uh, today was the waxing half moon and preceding that there were a few really interesting um, uh, alignments I want to quickly show you. So yesterday night um, the black moon was conjunct TX300. That is a very raw and kind of rude energy and sure enough it felt that way a bit today. It's kind of uh, that confrontational energy got really uh, tangible. It was in many ways a difficult day to stand one's ground and uh, there was also some quite fierce opposition coming in very visible here in this chart for Washington DC with Chiron in Midheaven, Chiron and Salacia and all these um, uh, heavyweights here in the seventh house as I say, confrontational, really head-on, um, pushing against, and it is kind of the build-up, the shadow becomes very tangible, very big, very obvious in many ways, and I guess that's the plan, um, that we allow the dark forces to m become fully visible to step out on of the dark and and show themselves in their full glory it is kind of that allowing the enemy to do the big move and then capture that move and move the energy in a in a way which is um beneficial it's it's that aw197's energy the art of war which is here in Virgo at 4 degrees 50 and you see it's that big drain AW197 the art of war the art of the stratagem to allow the enemy's energy to be deflected and used in a unexpected way so there's this big grand drain which I want to point out, Feroys, that's the mother bear's energy of using our intelligence to protect what is dear to us. The black moon in Taurus and here approaching Uranus, that will be exact on the 22nd. I mentioned the 22nd before, so keep that date in mind. That's really the culmination from what I can see when likely and that was kind of hinted at by Q many times uh, there will be one big arrest which will wake up everyone so I'm guessing that is the time when this big bang will be heard all around the globe kind of taking all the wind out of the sails of the dark forces having their narratives collapse I guess that's what we will see very soon around the 22nd so it's a build up so there is the moon here when the black moon was exactly conjunct TX300 which was that moment of big exaggeration there's this big drain here which goes over to Pholus and Quawar Folus and Quawar. Folus is the energy of sudden shifts of the ability to see what has to be done and to take that measure regardless. It's a, it follows, as I mentioned earlier, it always shows up in moments when there's radical changes, radical shifts possible. In early Capricorn, together with Quawar, Quawar, a creation goddess or god, actually it's a god uh, from the 
Eastern Island. The native tribe there. And the particular thing about Quawar is it is not just putting out an idea, it is really creating nuts and bolts, something new. So there's this big drain which I think will get even more accentuated once the sun changes into Capricorn, which will the 21st and that will be that um, great event we all have been looking toward for, for years, for many years, that big meeting of Jupiter and Saturn which everyone can see in the sky right now as they come closer to each other. So that was yesterday night. As I'm recording this it's Monday night so this is the midpoint chart between that black moon DX300 conjunction and what you see here is again the fifth degree of Aries rising that was the midheaven degree in this chart. So there is a repetition, it shows that the American nation is experiencing this energy very directly. Again, it's Salasia and Chiron both, and Salasia happens to be here in the midpoint chart at 5 degrees Libra, and right now Salasia is at 4 degrees Aries conjunct Chiron. This is an interesting conjunction as such as it's the process of looking into what's wrong and starting the healing process. Now Salasia is an enjoyable energy. It's something which cares to do something so there's some joy in that healing even though it's painful and difficult on many levels there's a big big silver lining that's what Salasia brings in here then um, early morning Monday as the week started there was Pallas changing signs into Aquarius right at sunrise in Washington DC and again we have Chiron here and Salasia strong placed uh, that is probably a um, couple months palace will be in Aquarius activating that zero degree Aquarius where Jupiter and Saturn will meet just in two weeks from now so palace is justice, truth, this the ability to put facts into a sequence and give them a strat strategic order. It is the art of law. In Aquarius it is in service of the people. This chart is particularly interesting with the moon here in Virgo and I just want to throw something in which is new. I found GZ32 that's a unnamed centaur which will play a major major role on the 21st of December as it is right in between um, the Sun and Mercury at that time here at the beginning of Capricorn which is all about the ability to see things in a new light and to have the world change around ourselves and it the adaption happens without even being able to fully realize why and how. It is almost a magical transformation of vision, of perspective. So this all is um, 
really um, extremely exciting on many levels. I will speak more about that particular centaur which is not really in this chart. Um, it is not part of this program here. So also today Saturn changed into the last degree of Capricorn, the very last, which is the turbulence, the anaretic degree of shift, of change, where all the eddies and, and unexpected chaotic zones are hiding. The last and the first degree, so Saturn has now entered that last degree, kind of bringing that three year period to a final conclusion, one more week to go, or actually, yeah, two more weeks, roughly 10, 10 days to be exact, till Saturn will change into Aquarius. Just three days after the big solar eclipse on the 14th, which will initiate uh, the, the push towards the 21st. It's I'm expecting on the 20, on the 14th uh, some first big court ruling uh, to to come out or 15th in that range. Third quarter moon again. Just want to show again Jupiter Pluto here at the 7th house cusp. Intense fast shifts and changes of power structures we're seeing right now. The moon coming again within Earth's inner planet sphere, so to say. The moon is an interesting orbiter as it can be an outer planet while it's on the outer side of Earth, so to say, that starts uh, with the waxing half moon and then at full moon it is uh, far out there on the other side of Earth. And then again it comes within the b between Earth and the Sun um, with the waning half moon, so it's kind of bringing back that energy. It has been kind of seasoning and now bring it back down to earth all that energy that inside whatever was harnessed so this seven day period now between the third quarter moon and the eclipse on the 14th It's kind of the getting ready for something. Hmm? Reorientation, then Rudy Hart calls that phase. Then tomorrow the, the sun shifts into hexagram 26, which is the taming power of the great a strong force it's kind of that center Sagittarius energy which is now getting activated with the Sun so you still in that build-up phase interesting that the midpoint chart between the American nation and transits the Sun changes into Libra which is the mid-heaven, the, the zenith sign of the American nation's chart, here you have it, and it is worth mentioning that Virgo is an intercepted sign, as the sun by midpoint changes into a Libra here out of that Virgo territory, things which were kind of hold back and not yet 
fully ready to express themselves when will come into, into the open now very fast very fast and furious that is um, the 12th of December when this will happen so and then this is then the event which goes with that that she said 32 entering Capricorn really ramping up here building up to something big interesting here that Venus Juno moon conjunction again saying that yes the power of people coming together in harmony and supporting one another is what will trigger it, all the exposure and all the disclosure said now about the unknown what has to be disclosed what has to be brought into the open it's not an easy process it's difficult in many ways but there is all this great energy which carries that way forward so it is happening despite whatever um, nothing can change what is coming nothing can stop what is coming that's kind of the energy one gets out of here interesting also that this centaur planets unknown unnamed i should say yet even though it has been found in 2002 still goes by the designation she said 32 You can see it there was still leo there will be leo rising and um mars in midheaven interesting that this is the same configuration we had when earth was at apelion in july which as i argued and still strongly believe this is kind of the most powerful moment to make a prediction of what is coming so that synchronicity shows that this is a really a major ingredient that G said 32 entering Capricorn on the 12th just a couple days before the eclipse happens and this is the midpoint chart of that ingress of G said 32 with the American People's Nation what stands out here is moon mars opposition moon black moon opposition here in general this these three points merging with each other starting around the 12th and then fully coming up to the node around the 22nd so this is a slow closing in and keep in mind the American nation sun is at 13 degrees 19 here in cancer so there's something really building up very powerfully very strongly to be released very very soon as I expect maybe another 10-15 days the 22nd I still think that will be the target and whatever that is which is hold back which will change not just America but the whole world because it will have such a huge impact it will wake people up it will truly be the big event which has been predicted uh, in connection to that Jupiter Saturn rebirth birth of the new era the golden age i want to leave it at this just a, um, a, a final quick um, view of this um, g set 32 discovery chart and i'm using the second frame because that's the moment when it gets clear yes something new has been found 
I will talk about this chart a little more in another video. It is powerful, powerful in itself. It really shows that ability to reassemble reality out of a deep insight of, of an understanding which just happens without any reason and rhyme. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thanks again for joining and listening. And the next one will be about Saturn changing signs and Jupiter changing signs. The next level up before that 21st Jupiter Saturn conjunction in Aquarius, the really, really finally big one, which will set the stage for the next 20 years. Thanks for joining and listening here. Talk to you soon.